So a couple weeks before Intel launched their 10th gen core series Comet Lake S processors, there are a bunch of slides going around that were officially from Intel uh, that listed the entire stack of 10th gen chips. And uh, on the very right column, there was pricing, but it was per 1000 unit pricing. So it was bulk pricing essentially, meaning single unit pricing would be a bit higher than those values provided. Uh, but even if Intel had given us the actual per unit MSRPs, um, I, I still feel like they would be all jacked up come launch day as they often are. Once you factor in third party retailers and whatever markups they want to add to the mix, uh, the MSRPs kind of fly out the window. But now that we actually have a select number of of core series, a 10th gen core series processors and Z490 motherboards in stock, I wanted to check out exactly how much money consumers are gonna have to spend in order to get on the Comet Lake S platform. And now that we have performance benchmarks from countless reviewers online, uh, we can pretty much have all the ingredients needed to assess the, the true value proposition of Intel's new platform compared to AMD's offerings on AM4. But before we dive in, bear in mind that regardless of what conclusions we draw from this video, uh, that now might not be the best time to build a new PC, mainly because the full stack of 10th gen CPUs haven't been released yet. There are still a number of chips that need to be tested against their AMD equivalents. Another reason you might not want to build a PC just yet is because AMD's B550 motherboards are just around the corner and are expected to arrive sometime in mid-June. Of course, there's probably not as much urgency to hop on B550 now that AMD has retracted its statement about Zen 3 support on its existing 400 series motherboards. Those will support each other. So that's no longer a perk that B550 has over the 400 series boards, but it's still a compelling option for users who want to get PCIe Gen 4 support on the cheap, or if they need more more PCIe general purpose lanes than B450 has to offer. So definitely some things to think about there, but considering this is a huge launch for Intel this week, I think it's still worth looking at the pricing and availability of their 10th gen chips and seeing how it stacks up against the competition. So uh, we're gonna take a look at the Core i9 10900K, Core i7 10700K, and the Core i5 10600K versus their respective counterparts, the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X, 3700X, and the 3600. Uh, let's start off with the big dogs first, the Intel Core i9 10900K up against AMD's Ryzen 9 3900X. So uh, I already did a video dedicated on exactly these two chips. And if you watch that video, you already kind of know that uh, my conclusions about it were were pretty much the same as they were for the 9900K against the 3900X. Intel still has the faster gaming CPU, but the lead is marginal when you're gaming at 1440p or higher. And most people buying a, a CPU in this class are gonna be gaming at those resolutions. So it's hard to justify, especially when the multi-threaded performance of the 3900X just completely wipes the floor with, uh, with the 10900K. Um, it has two additional cores, four extra threads. It's by far the better all around performer, and it can be paired with the cheap B450 motherboard and still work perfectly fine. Whereas the uh, the 10900K, you'll have to pair with a, a Z490 board to make the most of it if you want to overclock. Um, and that's going to cost a, a bit of a premium over Intel's other 400 series boards. If you look on Amazon, you can see the Core i9 part isn't even available right now. And there's no price listed. However, I was able to find a price on Newegg, even though it's still out of stock. Uh, the pricing that they have here is 530 US dollars. That's definitely a bit more than the sub $400 uh, per thousand part pricing that we saw on that Intel slide and it's currently over $100 more than the 3900X. So overall, the 3900X is by far and away the better value between the two. Um, I would say the 10900K, as you're about to see, is probably the worst value chip in the 10th gen series lineup that, that we've seen so far. The only reason you should buy the CPU is if you absolutely value the highest possible frame rates uh, where you know even like a 5% single digit gains matter to you uh, and you're willing to pay a hefty premium for it, then, then that's that's the only case I can really make for this chip at these prices. Let me do a bit of arithmetic here to find out how much each of these platforms would cost. So let's say we went the AMD route. We got a 3900X for 420. And by the way, this is the lowest price I could find it for. It was it was a bit more expensive on Newegg. 420 bucks for the 3900X plus an adequate B450 motherboard. If you were trying to you know go best case scenario, um, there are you know really cheap B450 boards that uh, are probably too cheap for the 3900X. You'd want to scale up to something with a, a bit more robust of a VRM to handle all those cores. So maybe something like the Asus TUF B450 here, right? Um, it's it's 120 bucks. You can get, uh, I, I know the uh, MSI B450 Tomahawk, which is a really good board um, that I don't see here right now. It's probably sold out, but that goes for, you know, usually around 115, 120 bucks. Can perfectly accommodate a 3900X. So that's 120 plus 420, that's $540. 
and you're pretty much done right there. I mean, it, it comes included with a cooler. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page. It comes included with a Wraith Prism RGB cooler. It's not the cooler of your dreams. It's not gonna let you hit ridiculously high overclocks, but it's a perfectly adequate cooler. It's a nice value add, and it's one more thing you don't have to spend additional money on. So $540 out the door. How much do you have to spend with Intel? Well, if you're buying from Newegg right now, the price of the CPU alone pretty much matches what you would get on the AMD side for the CPU, cooler, and motherboard. Just let that sink in. Now, if we take a look at all the available Z490 motherboards that have just launched here on Newegg, sorted by lowest price, we can see that they start at around $150. Not too bad, but that's still 150 bucks that you have to tack on to 530, which is $680, and we don't even have a cooler yet. So we're almost at 700 bucks and we still need a cooler. Uh, what, what's the absolute bare minimum you think you could spend on a cooler for a 10900K? I mean, being super conservative here, maybe 50 bucks. So you're spending roughly a little over $700. You're looking at paying roughly 33% more with Intel in this matchup which is uh, no small amount. It's just simply too expensive and not powerful enough. I mean, even if it performed, let's just say that the productivity numbers were on par with the 3900X and, and the gaming performance was, you know, roughly 15% faster on average at 1080p uh, or 10% faster at 1440p, you're still, who's still gonna pay 33% more for this when you can have this? The 10900K needs to blow the 3900X out of the water in multiple categories for these prices to make sense. Unfortunately, it does not do that. So let's move on to our next tier, going one tier down. This is the Core i7-10700K, and you can see that it's actually available. It's available, oh, number one new release. Look at that, I wonder how they rate that. Is that just like, did Intel pay for that to be there? I don't know. Uh, but uh, $387, that's actually uh, lower than what I was expecting on launch day. I was probably anticipating over 400 bucks, but here you go, uh, eight cores, 16 threads, and uh, clocks up to 5.1 gigahertz. This is essentially a Core i9-9900K for 100 bucks less. So uh, 9900K is now a terrible value, even worse than it might've been previously. Uh, but uh, you know, how does this actually stack up against its direct competitor, which uh, would be the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, or depending on how you look at it, if you wanna look at pricing, the 3900X. Cause I mean, the Ryzen chips may be 30 bucks more expensive here, so not a whole lot more. Now, if you're more concerned about gaming performance than you are with workstation stuff, then you might be like, well, I'm just gonna go with the faster gaming CPU uh, if they're around the same price. But then you should also be considering the Ryzen 7 3700X, which has, you know, fewer cores and threads that you, you know, definitely won't need if you're just gonna be gaming. Um, but this is a lot cheaper. This is uh, roughly a hundred bucks cheaper, almost exactly a hundred dollars cheaper than the Core i7. And it's gonna be performing, once again, very closely in gaming workloads at 1440p. Um, so unless you're trying to target 1080p, 144 hertz or something like that, it, you know, again, it's, it's a tough sell. The Core i7 is a tough sell here compared to the AMD offering. I don't think the 10700K comes with a cooler either. So there's another 50 bucks at least, at least. A lot of people who are buying this are gonna try to overclock it and they're gonna need a good cooler, maybe hundred bucks on an AIO or something like that. So being very generous here saying that you at least need to add $50 for a cooler, where again, you don't have to do that on the AMD side. The third and final matchup that we'll look at today is between the Core i5-10600K, six core 12 thread processor, and the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, six core 12 thread processor. Now you can see that it's currently unavailable here on Amazon. It's no nowhere to be found on Newegg or any other major e-tailer that I could find. Um, so we don't know the exact price of the 10600K. We can assume that it's probably going to be anywhere between 270 to $280 if uh, if that Intel slide was anything to go by. I think it said like the part per thousand unit pricing was 262 bucks. So factoring that in, single unit price might be closer to 280. Again, we're seeing a trend here. It looks like the AMD equivalent is always about $100 cheaper, which puts Intel in a really tough position, especially when you're forced to buy an aftermarket cooler and a more expensive motherboard on top of that. That being said, now that Intel has added hyper-threading support to almost their full stack of 10th gen CPUs, including the Core i5-10600K, these two chips are a bit more competitive now when it comes to multi-threaded performance. As we've already discussed, the Core i7 and Core i9 parts just get beat. They get beaten badly by their direct AMD competitors. Whereas that's not the case with the Core i5. It's actually a pretty good, well-rounded chip. Unfortunately for Intel, I still think the Ryzen 3600 is the better overall value when you consider the $100 price difference and the lower platform costs uh, and having things like an included cooler. I will say this though, I did spot 
uh, another 10th gen series CPU that I wasn't expecting to. This is the Core i5-10400. It also has six cores and 12 threads, now that we have multi-threading on a lot of these chips, um, but it's uh, but it's much cheaper, $216. This is definitely more competitive uh, with the 3600 in terms of pricing. Have no idea how this thing performs. It's it's locked, there's no case queue, um, which means you can't overclock it, but that also means you can buy a cheaper non-Z series board that supports 10th gen CPUs uh, and spend even less money trying to go for a Comet Lake S system. So uh, I've actually already purchased one of these chips. It's on its way, should be here tomorrow. I'll, I'll be doing some testing on that against the 3600 to see how they stack up. This chip does feature a lower 65 watt TDP and 4.3 gigahertz turbo, but if it can keep pace with the 3600, then this might be the most compelling option that we've seen from Intel so far with 10th gen, being that it is not too far off in terms of pricing, it does include a cooler, and its performance won't be crippled by using a cheaper series motherboard. So we'll just have to see how things shake out between these two chips, but uh, it's honestly the one that I'm most excited for. I think also because um, these prices are a bit more reasonable, they're more mainstream, uh, more or less the sort of sweet spot that a lot of gamers will be looking at. Uh, with these two chips. So uh, more on that later. This also makes me very curious to see the price and performance of Intel's 10th gen Core i3 processors, which will also feature hyper-threading, and uh, to see how those compare to the recently launched AMD Ryzen 3 parts, uh, the 3100 and 3300X. But we'll have to wait and see about those. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it's somewhat relevant by the time you're watching it. Uh, I know prices and availability fluctuate and change all the time, so there's a 50-50 chance that this video is already dead, but that's okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Toss a like before you go. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see you guys in the next video.